So it looks like we're live. Week seven of the Agora project. We have Nancy and Terry and Kike here with us. And we're hoping some of you are joining us. I know I got some messages from somebody that want to join and someone that's trying to join. And we'll see how people show up as we go. Anything? Uh, watch on Twitter to see if you look. going to get on there. Yeah, I'm watching all the channels to see what's going on. I sent a message out to Sarah. I sent a message out to Gabriel, to the people in Tonala, to Israel, and we'll see who who comes along. What's everyone have to talk about today? Kike, qué onda? ¿Cómo estás? Hola, cómo están? Pues bienvenidos. El día de hoy vamos a hablar de identidad digital, digital identity. How we can uh, show our work. How we can uh, establish links with people with the same interests so in order to maybe form a network and sharing stuff. Good. Or hide. <laughs> <laughs> so anonymity and not anonymity and pseudo anonymity and its role in learning. Okay. Yes. So there's this sort of continuum of digital identity for us as teachers, for us as students, and then there's digital identity as part of learning because if you if you subscribe to social learning theory, one of the key elements to learning is identity. So it's it's this lovely like multi-layer chocolate cake. <laughs> Everything comes back to chocolate. Voice <laughs> note. But we can say that one very important part of digital identity is what Google says when you search for your name, right? That's the public face of digital identity, yep. Entonces, este, es importante que busquemos nuestro nombre en Google para ver qué rastros hemos dejado. Let's, let's Google Jorge Enrique. <laughs> what's your last name? Share your screen, let's see what we find. Okay, what's your last name again? Lopez Campos. Lopez Campos. Campos. Okay, so let me, let me. Okay, hold on. Let me screen share. I've got too many windows open. I'm doing the bad girl. I'm doing the bad girl thing. Okay. His blog. I'm turning red. <laughs> uh, here we go, man. Let's see. That's the article I'm reading. Okay, this is what I go. got. That's him. Too. Yeah, I like the. And look at look at the picture. Okay. I love that it. was me like 10 years ago. Uh -huh. hey, Which so is actually interesting with digital identity, where a lot of us, the pictures we show out and, in the public isn't... And online stuff. dating. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it looks like we have the folks from Tonala. Oh, Nos escuchan, nos pueden comunicar. Buenos días. Let me stop sharing. Hold on. No, oh, good. It's not letting me stop screen share. Creo que no Pues en su correo dice educat tonalá, entonces yo estoy asumiendo que es tonalá. vamos a decir Escusea. Pues tienen tienen su correo raro porque dice educat tonalá, entonces yo estoy asumiendo que era tonalá. Pero bueno. Digital identity. It depends what your email address looks like, right? The and Buenos whether you have Hotmail or you have your own domain. Exactly. Um, did you make your Hotmail account when you were 12 years old and it's a fluffy something? <laughs> <laughs> fluffy bunny at hotmail.com. <laughs> Muy buenos días. ¿Nos pueden escuchar? Sí. sí. Excelente. Entonces, también podemos escuchar a ustedes. Excelente. Déjame, estoy como manejando todas las herramientas aquí para intentar conectar a otras personas. No sé si quieren empezar ustedes de Cusea, hablar sobre su proyecto y me contactaran para compartir. Claro. Uh, we, we would like to share about the things that we have done. Excellent. We have different teachers that are working in different areas, but we get together every week. The purpose to get together every week is because sometimes we have a specific problem on how to apply a specific app. So we get together every Friday, usually one hour, but sometimes it extends more than one hour. And we work together in a specific situation. 
there are some species that they have different styles of applying and, 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 and that. And there are other teachers that have different views. So usually we get together and share ideas, especially in the plan implementation as our final project. Uh, the meetings is usually once a week, sometimes twice a week, one hour. And the objective of this meeting is to get better in this specific purpose. And uh, the things that we're going to do, we're going to talk about our plans, each one of us. OK. And Perfect. I'd like to begin. Do you want me to begin or wait? I think we jump in. OK. So let me begin in my, myself. I teach on a subject that is called rural tourism. And uh, at the end of the semester, I usually uh, tell students that they have to do an uh, investigation protocol. And now they have to use different apps in order to get a better result. One of the apps that I'm trying to uh, make to do this amendment using pictures at the end of the video. And then at the end of the semester, uh, I'm going to apply a survey asking the students how do they feel about using apps in the final investigation. So at the end, I'm going to understand if it is good for this learning process. That's from my part. That's everything. Have any questions? So, so I don't know if you want to do this in Spanish because I don't know how comfortable everyone is. So, make a decision. You guys can drive <laughs> that decision, okay? But um, how have students gone from just like creating a meme to creating a meme that's useful that demonstrates learning? What have you noticed? Well, first, first of all, they are excited to use different applications in the investigation. So far, we've been using memes and pictures, and at the end, they're going to use a video. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it. Are they starting to understand that the meme is a way to communicate an idea in a quick way? Are, is the kind of concept? Yeah, I see a nodding behind you. <laughs> they understand that it's a tool good tools to understand and to make better a specific project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Muy bien. Hola, yo, yo quiero comentar sobre eh, lo, lo que están trabajando con geografía turística. Eh, en este, en, 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 yo creo que los alumnos están haciendo trabajo en campo. Ellos hacen, toman video, pero eh, a lo que se ha trabajado, ellos eh, quieren presentar el PowerPoint convertido en un video, uh -huh. porque quieren musicalizarlo también y quieren hacer ellos una presentación con una narración de ellos mismos, una narración propia y musicalizarlo a través de, de PowerPoint. Entonces, hemos, hemos creado, según el, el tema que tenemos por, por esta semana, eh, crear una, una identidad digital. Estamos comunicando a través de WhatsApp o a lo mejor a través de, de Facebook. Pero bueno, a, aquí el, la finalidad es que ellos el producto lo presenten ya con un resultado que pueda ser favorable para, para una población. Okay. Okay. Anyone got Anyone questions there? Kike, ¿quieres entrar ahí? Quiero nada más decir aquí, aquí veo, veo Moisés conectado para nada más saludarlo. Ahí está Moisés conectado y Rocío ya conectó. Ya. Yeah. Andamos esperando que Muchas. conecte a Rocío un buen rato. Ya lo logramos. Buenos Muchas. días. Buenos días. Entonces, yo, yo, yo tengo una pregunta, más tal vez otras personas tienen pregun preguntas. ¿No? Creo que Rocío acaba de conectar, Terry o Kike, si no, pues entramos con Nancy. Bueno, yo, yo quiero comentar Bye. que eh, me parece muy valioso el aspecto de enganchar a, a los jóvenes al estudio mediante los memes, ¿no? Uh -huh. eh, pero siempre hay que tener bien bien pensado eh, 
qué, qué implicación pedagógica le podemos dar al, al meme, ¿no? Cómo defender el, el, el que sea no solamente divertido, sino que también abone al, al, al aprendizaje ese meme, ¿no? Y, y bueno, en términos de materias de turismo, creo que el video es un excelente recurso. Y creo que, por ejemplo, al ponerle esa narración, esa música, lo que hacemos es desarrollar esa competencia de contar historias, eh, que, que, es, que es una competencia muy importante, ¿no? Y que eh, eh, ya echamos mano de todos los recursos tecnológicos para eh, eh, fomentarla y para que los estudiantes la puedan construir, porque hay muchos que, que, que no sabemos comunicarnos, yo, yo me he topado con muchos estudiantes de CUSEA que tienen pavor de, de, de las exposiciones, de que verdaderamente ellos prefieren eh, eh, comunicarse vía texto y el hecho de que narren un video este, puede ayudarlos a no solamente sentirse más, más cómodos, sino que también este, eh, eh, los rete a contar historias ¿no? y desarrollar esa competencia. Sí, yo quiero hacer una observación. Sí. Eh, Adelante. En las reuniones que hemos tenido nosotros cada vez, Siempre tenemos que preguntar y qué aplicaciones vamos a obviamente, tener en ellos solamente para la enseñanza aprendizaje. No nada más aplicar un instrumento, sino también el beneficio que puede tener el mismo instrumento para la enseñanza. Así es, tener el componente pedagógico presente. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, Kike answered my. He got the question I was going to ask, so it's in there. Which is the competencies. Um, and that matching of the tools and the competencies. And I want to see the videos. Tienen preparados para compartir. ¿En Dino? Seguimos en Puse a los demás miembros. Sí. Buenos días. Thank you. Uh, I was uh, sharing with my classmates and my colleagues the fact that I'm uh, trying to improve my class by using applications. Uh, for example, uh, I communicate uh, to students uh, with Edmodo, and mm -hmm. uh, I have designed all my classes with a certain uh, code uh, in English and in Spanish, so to, in a certain way, to motivate them to speak in English. And exactly. it's a very interesting uh, experiment because they uh, really enjoy doing that in another language. For those who do not speak English, uh, they do their presentation in Spanish. And, and at the end, they present their class with a meme. And uh, what uh, makes the thing very interesting is that when the, they find a topic very dense and abstract with the meme, it becomes a very interesting thing to learn. And even to, to laugh about. Huh. Do do you find that it that the speakers of uh, with not great English is the memes pulling them into the conversation a little bit more? Oh yes, yes. In, in, a, in a certain way, they are uh, they are encouraged to learn English. Some of them do not speak any any word, and now they feel uh, the need of doing that because they see that sometimes they can even get feedback from students abroad. Right. It's like for us foreigners coming here and then we watch the cartoons because we can't understand something more deep. Yes, they do. For example, they usually, when, when I talk about human rights, they usually make memes combining uh, humans with animals to, in a certain way, distinguish what a human right is uh, mm -hmm. in a behavioral way, uh, way towards animals. And it's very interesting. It's interesting because as a as a Canadian here in Mexico, one thing I noticed is during the news, I mean, we have much more comedy here in Mexico. Where um, during a news segment, there'll be a cartoonish piece where they come in and they connect the patient, and the patient wakes up and they tell him about the news of the week. Yeah. Where you have Broso, which is literally a clown dressed up as a clown giving like political commentary. So I think Mexicans have a much deeper relation with comedy, and I, I think maybe that's how memes help help get people connected. Would you say that Mexico is the only country who has as an anchor a clown in the mornings? I, I, just, I tell people that and it just blows them away. They just don't get it. And so it's very different. I mean, we're very much drier in Canada. So, But I, 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 he, Grosso is interesting, that's for sure. I'm not going to get into politics here because I'm Canadian. They'll kick me out of the country. 
I think so, and I think that's why memes are working a lot for a lot of you. And, and some of us think that it's not, we got to get past the meme. I think we do, but I think the meme has a very good connection with people here, and I, I think that works really well. Okay, that's my experience. Thanks, everyone. Who else wants to jump in? Moises, ¿nos puedes escuchar? No te escuchamos, no está bien conectado tu micrófono, creo. Y Rocío está medio conectado. Tenemos su imagen, pero está como cargando su aplicación en su iPad. I didn't know you had to have an app on the iPad to connect. Ugh. Sorry for that technical glitch. Terry, what's Lilia's uh, question? The question is about digital identity. Let me see. I'll go look. Is um, if is your digital identity does it help your professional career? Ah. Or heard it. Or heard it. <laughs> oh, yes, that's it. The importance of having a good digital identity, identity, your internet history, does it help your career? Wow. What does the panel think? <laughs> Who wants? I mean, I have a lot of. I made a conscious decision about two years ago to make myself much more visible on the internet in in terms of blog posting and, and just the stuff I'm working on, flip learning and and other things in my community here, and it's definitely given me massive benefits. I get, get invited to go speak at places and I don't, I don't, it's not just I get invited by someone who knows me that knows someone, it's just a random person found me and I went to Korea last year just because someone invited me to talk about flip learning and I thought they were stalking me or something because I said I'm not famous, I haven't published a book or anything. What's but, stalking um, in, in Spanish? I don't know but <laughs> what's the, what's the translation Kike for stalking? Someone who's like gonna it's kidnap like, yeah. me. Stalker. Exactly. But but when I talked to John Bergman and these people that are famous in the area, they said, no, it's because you're putting yourself out there and people are noticing it and it, and it is important. So um, like for me, professionally, I've never had a negative experience uh, that I know of. So, um, But I think people worry more about the negative and, and it depends on circumstance. The but negative I think it's can be that you're too busy. Well, there's that. I, 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 I can't stop saying yes, and that's a problem. <laughs> but it's a reality that, that employers are, are looking for uh, people uh, for uh, to hiring, looking for, at their social networks, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe we, we should reflect, if we were the people that is hiring uh, personal, we will hire uh, ourselves but based on what we have on in the internet. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, one thing that's interesting there is too is we have elections up in Canada. Well, I'm down here in Mexico right now, but Terry's up there in Canada, and a lot of people running for political office got pulled out of the election because of stupid things stupid they posted things in the past. Said, yeah. So I'm pretty sure all the stupid things I did was when I was much younger and there was no Facebook. Um, <clears throat> So I don't have that problem, but it's one thing we need to be aware of is everything we put out on the internet is pretty much permanent. Do people know about the Wayback Machine? Yes. I don't think some people do. You can demo it, Nancy, if you want to bring it up. Okay. Let's see. Alan shared it as a daily try. Mm -hmm. Actually, let, 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 I think we should go back to Jorge's uh, yeah. Google. I think I'm going to share my screen. Wait, let me stop. <laughs> I think the folks and the Educat group other people want to share their stuff, and you know. I we think, and I think they're ready, so we made yeah, it. We, yeah, we talk too easy. Let's so I think back. the co consensus is mostly for the answer to that question. Yes, it can help your career <laughs> if you do it right. And if you don't do it, it could harm your career. Right. Or just stall it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Back to the examples. And Moises is back. Cosea, creo que tienen que conectar su audiofono. Está en mute. Can you hear us? Oh, now we hear you. Okay, cool. We're not talking. Soy Idalia. Gracias por todo. Me gustó el tema de la lectura de identidad digital en función a que Cosea ha sido siempre un centro de la vanguardia en función de exponer. Eh, diferentes métodos de enseñanza-aprendizaje que otros centros han retomado 
Y hoy resulta que dentro de nuestra página de CUSEA aparece una noticia que CUSEA precisamente ha implementado unos sitios de micro ciudad inteligente con sensores de temperatura, de contaminación sonora, de humedad e iluminación. Indistintamente a este apoyo con la tecnología del centro, nosotros eh, como docentes también estamos haciendo nuestro trabajo. ¿En qué sentido? Pues básicamente en atraer esta nueva fórmula de cultura digital, la lectura, pero eh, que ese, ese, esas herramientas, tanto programas como equipos, se han utilizado básicamente para atraer la atención académica del estudiante. Buen día. Al aspecto académico, eh, hemos planeado nuestros cursos ya con la implementación de tecnologías. El éxito, yo lo puedo decir que ha sido positivo. Eh, en el caso particular, he efectuado algunos eh, por eh, resultados eh, en corto, a mitad, de, estamos básicamente a mitad de semestre y me ha dado uh, un resultado positivo en torno a eh, que los jóvenes eh, continúan con un aprendizaje de la ley, como en el caso yo imparto la materia de legislación financiera. Por ahí eh, en Twitter han tenido diferentes eh, ejemplos que nuestros alumnos han efectuado ya como un trabajo eh, medio, un trabajo final, vamos, que, que, que tiene repercusión en el aspecto de, de su evaluación final, pero eh, me, ha, me ha gustado, vamos, la, esa creatividad, ese talento que los muchachos también eh, con ellos aprendo y me han atraído a que la lectura, que es de una manera quizás compleja para ellos, hace una abstracción de los contenidos mucho más sutil, más eh, interesante quizás para el aspecto visual, que eh, puede resultar una lectura compleja. Entonces, en el caso de, de este diplomado, a mí me ha funcionado de una manera excelente y por los resultados de las encuestas que hasta el momento he tomado también ha sido igual. Les agradezco mucho. Awesome. Someone have a comment there? I'm seeing people jumping in as well, so I'm, I'm kind of like driving the bus in the back here. I know Moises went out and back in, and Ermelinda joined in as well. Nancy made some comments talking about smart cities, digital sensors. Uh, ¿Tienes algo ahí, Kike? Pues nada más decir que efectivamente pues el, el, el que se ha avanzado mucho en términos de la implementación de modalidades no convencionales y da gusto, a mí me, 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 me parece muy interesante, por ejemplo, esa aplicación para eh, de alguna manera promover que los universitarios leamos y leamos hipertexto y leamos en pantallas, eh, en dispositivos móviles, porque durante el diplomado mucho hablamos de, de, de que vienen las olas de innovación, ¿no? Ahora nosotros estamos leyendo contenidos en nuestros tiempos muertos eh, mientras estamos haciendo otra cosa y entonces este, los estudiantes mismos que tienen muchos de ellos trabajan muchos tienen muchas ocupaciones pues este pueden aprovechar para seguirse formando para seguir este de alguna manera procurando nutrir eh, eh, teniendo una dieta cognitiva no estar todo el tiempo eh, conectados en redes y estar recibiendo actualizaciones de estado de contenidos que después les pueden ser relevantes entonces me parece muy interesante esa aplicación que, 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 que utilizan de, de promover la lectura de textos universitarios no so I I feel like I didn't I only understood about 20 or 30 percent of what you said and I was extremely excited by it um, mm -hmm. because for a number of reasons one is that you are connecting that your students out with the real world and to me this is that also part of that digital identity piece which is if we are training people to be professionals in the world they should be connected to the professional world before they're launched out into the world those connections take a while to form so those sorts of projects to me are incredibly fabulous and also that as they publish publicly online what they do they begin building their digital 
professional identity as architects or whatever. So the last thing I want to say is there's a pitch. I've got some students in the Netherlands who are trying to work with a small nonprofit outside of Mexico City which are doing robotics in schools, teaching children uh, robotics and programming using robots. And they need to figure out how to help this NGO have lower cost robot part kits, kit parts, mm -hmm. you know. And I keep on thinking, why don't they collaborate with your design students in Mexico to figure out, for example, maybe how you could create a robotics kit with recycled materials. Mm -hmm. So do a hackathon with mm -hmm. students who know the context. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, this can't be done quickly, but it's these kinds of online digital connections that can expand the learning field. The learning field is not just the classroom, it's the community, it's the region, it's the country, it's the world. And what, ah, yes, it's exciting. Okay. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. We're definitely, like, in the last week or two, there's been a lot of, of messages coming directly to us via email, via DLO, and, and people are just at that kind of crescendo excited point. In a lot of what, what you're doing online and with your students. Ahora, ¿podemos escuchar a Moisés? Moisés, can we hear you now? Uh, I think your microphone's not working. Boo! Hermelinda entró también. No sé si podemos escuchar a Hermelinda. Primero, Rocío. Rocío, excelente. Es que Hola. lo estoy viendo como se, 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 se muestra mi pantalla. Muy bien. Veo a Hermelina ahí atrás. Sí, ¿pueden escucharme? Sí. Adelante, algo que quieren compartir hoy con nosotros. Bueno, yo quiero compartirles que tuve una experiencia, en, sobre todo en Facebook, uh, que a mí me, me impactó, o me dejó como muy satisfecha porque implementé mi, pues, mi reto, que era el reto de eh, unificar realizar grupos de cuatro personas en el de en el, la materia de seminario de investigación en esa materia eh, pues tendría ellos tendrían que realizar un, al final del semestre un protocolo de investigación sin embargo eh, bueno en este primer momento por los tiempos les pedí que se unieran en equipos de cuatro y que empezaran a revisar la problemática y la redacción de las preguntas de investigación y los objetivos y posteriormente tenían que hacer en equipo, tenían que hacer un mapa mental donde explicaran la problemática y lo que querían investigar y lo tenían que comp compartir eh, a través de Facebook. Lo que a mí me sorprendió es que abrimos un grupo cerrado, de lo cual yo soy, yo soy amiga de un, en Facebook soy amiga de uno de mis estudiantes. A partir de eso, él abrió un grupo cerrado con todos los demás estudiantes que se llamaba Seminario de Investigación y ahí todos por equipo tenían que subir su, eh, pues su mapa mental, lo subieron y cada uno tenía que, a través del foro, pues del foro de Facebook, tenía que comentar y o sea, hacer comentarios respecto a la investigación, eh, al mapa, etcétera. Eh, lo impresionante es que hicieron una primera exposición en clase y bueno, yo siempre decía, hay preguntas, eh, alguien quiere comentar algo, nada, nada, presencial, nada. Cuando lo suben al Facebook y yo les pido que tienen que comentar mínimo a tres grupos, cada por persona, bueno, los comentarios se tornaron, que yo se los juro que yo pensaba que era totalmente profesionista porque era eh, discutiendo sobre la problemática, sobre eh, cuál va a ser tu marco teórico, los objetivos no están, no me parecen que no están acordes a tus preguntas, todo eso entre ellos. La discusión fue bastante buena, toda una clase, en lugar de yo ir a clases, yo estuve en mi computadora y ellos en el centro de cómputo o con sus iPad o, o sus computadoras y todos al mismo tiempo, sincrónicamente hablando, eh, estábamos comentando en Facebook. Eh, la verdad es que fue una experiencia riquísima. Yo después les, eh, a través también de Facebook, les compartí un, 
un formulario en Google Docs y bueno, los comentarios han sido excelentes, que les encantó, quieren ya todas las clases en Facebook según ellos, pero obviamente, bueno, esa experiencia uh, creo que fue muy, muy enriquecedora y muy buena, eh, sobre todo porque como que se sintieron libres y los comentarios no eran por grupos, eran personales. Entonces, la discusión, sobre todo, independientemente de que dijera, está bien, incluso hubo quienes se atrevían a, a compartir, mira, a te sirve tal información que acabo de encontrar, les compartían ligas, documentos, este, mira, si quieres investigar, porque mi área es abogados, eh, y unos iban a investigar sobre el delito de violación, mira, aquí hay información, eh, te comparto este periódico, lo que salió hoy, te comparto esta lectura, entonces fue como de muy, muy enriquecedor y sinceramente yo no, no podía como creerlo. Yo por eso, de hecho, me conecté precisamente para compartirles esta experiencia. Y también lo compartieron en Twitter, pero en Twitter ellos no, pues no, solamente fue como compartirlo. no a, Aunque yo les pedí que si querían hacer algún comentario, retweet, lo que ellos, no. El, como que les llamó más la atención Facebook y los comentarios fueron extraordinarios. Interesting. I think it's like we saw before, I'll switch to English just just because, that a lot of the students, it was just so so much easier for them to jump in Facebook and comment in Facebook and, and it's, I, I think it's so much that it's just something they're already using so it's easier and when we, yes. and we saw last week we had this uh, what we call Samana E at the tech where the entire tech, all of our campuses shut down for the week, no classes, they're working on projects and I collected the hashtags to that Twitter um, hashtag there was 17,000 tweets but I'm doing some analysis on it and it's almost all individual tweets like it was their one required tweet they had to do in their activity that they were doing that week um, I, I need to do some more analysis but it seems like all of the Twitter traffic is really kind of forced like they did it because they had to it was an assignment whereas when they jump in Facebook they feel comfortable and, and, and they start chatting and, and, and getting engaged. I know Nancy's nodding her head a whole bunch there, so I'll shut up. I, I don't hear you though, you're, you're muted Nancy. Uh -oh. You muted Nancy? I, I can hear you. Sorry? Adelante. Escuche, uh -huh. No escucho Nancy. Nancy's muted. Nancy. Yeah, one thing Nancy's saying, she's typing as well, is I think there's there's like some technical problems that's always happening. Like I know Moise is there, and I know Moise hears us, and we're trying to hear him, but his microphone just doesn't want to work. Um, you might want to move your mouse to the top of this window, Moise, with the video, and there's a button with a microphone. I think you're muted right now, so you might have to click that microphone button, because we can't hear you right now. Oh, Nancy's showing it off to us. I'm freaking out with a parallax effect of watching me, watching me, watching me, watching me. <laughs> Going into vertigo. But, um, yeah, there's... No, there's Ken, there I'm, go. Just, go ahead. I'm just operating via mime. Excellent. Because it's the universal language. These, these hangouts, if you ever try to do them, they're really tricky. <laughs> Because I'm trying to work like five windows behind the screen here and trying to pay attention to conversations and help translate for our... Um, less uh, Spanish-speaking um, folks, but um, Nancy was saying we really want to have more of these hangouts. If, if I'm trying if to get some on in. the side hangout, definitely do it. I've had some of my group come and and meet me for coffee in person, but as well or from other groups. Terry had someone who really wanted to talk to someone and they were struggling with the Spanish and English and and take advantage of meeting us online or meeting with each other online. It's, I think I find it much richer to have a conversation than just to write back and forth. Go ahead. I think Terry has something to say. Yep. And then I think we should go back to another example because I, yep. I, I think that's the richness here. And, oh, and yeah. I think, yeah. And I know some other people have jumped in, so we, let's see. Yeah, okay. One. I had a couple people in another window trying to get some links, and that's I'm, so I'm watching and nodding and trying to do that <laughs> in the background. So we may have some more people join us in a minute. Okay. okay. So back to Edu Scott. Back to Kusea. Yeah, we're not, we're okay, this is uh, another experience. Uh, we have five groups, and uh, we uh, are uh, including the careers of urbanism and hospitality. And talking about the topic of uh, cultural differences, 
and uh, also planning a friendless uh, city. And uh, the idea is to develop the four uh, abilities of the language. The, the learning is communicating in a different language, uh, English uh, particularly, and uh, academically, using keywords and being concise uh, related to the, to the careers, right? Okay, what we have done is at the beginning of the course, we um, made the students uh, uh, film at home their everyday life. And they share it uh, with the other groups, with all the groups through the Google Drive, or we use also Dropbox or OneDrive. And then next activity is to go out to the streets to talk to the to the visitors, to the tourists in English, any uh, any nationality, and to learn about the culture, what they find in Mexico, and what is the, what are the differences and the, um, uh, what attracts today to Mexico and uh, what is very different from Mexico. And of course, we we know and we learn from from what uh, you know. It's like a mirror. Um, this uh, they film and they share in the group, and then we upload to to a common uh, site. And uh, also, there is a student that um, is a, a tour guide, uh, tourist guide, and he uh, filmed uh, his um, town. Is the third uh, uh, theater in Jalisco, in the region, after the Degollado and Lagos de Morelo. This is a, a small village by Chapala Lake, and it's called Islahuacan de los Membrillos. And he filmed uh, all the town, and he uh, now the, the third step is to uh, give the description of this. What we're going to to, uh, to do at the end of the course is that, uh, well, along the course we are going to practice with the Twitter uh, in, to be concise and use proper English. We are working now in editing the, the writings, okay? Because it's difficult for us, we don't, we don't read much in Spanish, we don't write much in Spanish at this level. I'm, 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 I'm ashamed to, to mention this, but it's true and we know, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, we are trying to write in 140 characters using the Twitter, but we haven't dared to um, to to uh, show to uh, to everybody. And I wanted to ask, I asked my my colleagues now, and I said, well, if that's your challenge to make them write it correctly. But I would like to share the the advance. I mean, to see what they are doing, and now uh, the what kind of mistakes. Because when they they see what their mistakes are or their classmates, they learn. This is what the process of learning occurs. And also, uh, uh, when they listen to their own mistakes in the film and when they interview the, the people, I don't know if um, I mean I was if it was too confusing or you I make myself clear. So this is very interesting. Yesterday, the last two days, I spent with a bunch of people at a an NGO talking about their learning program with their grantees out in the field and this whole idea of learning from failures was very important and very challenging particularly um, and this goes to digital identity again you know what if I made a mistake on this hangout it's being recorded it's going to be on YouTube how's that going to make me look and what we realized is where there was the most success in learning from failure, and we do learn from failure. I think seeing one's own mistakes can be embarrassing and a huge learning mo moment at the same time, is to shift our thinking from thinking about failure to thinking about adaptive learning. I try, I evaluate, I improve. And it's the whole idea of multiple loop learning. But what they realized is they actually had to change their language around this. They had to stop saying failure. They had to say, what do I need to adapt next time? Because the shame part of the failure was a real barrier. It was significant. There were people in multiple cultures. There was a lot of, you know, they didn't want to lose face. There's a lot at risk in terms of money. So shifting the entire way of talking about it to adaptive learning was it's like whoosh possibility opened so when we think about how a student will portray themselves online mistakes included we have to think about triggers that help both position it as adaptive learning and invite the network so people on Twitter 
to participate in that adaptive learning. So when a student would tweet something and I'd say it, I might ask a clarifying question if the content wasn't clear, or I might send them a private message suggesting that the spelling wasn't mm -hmm. clear. So there was a strategy. One was a correction, but the other one was a deepening thing to help them adapt their language a little bit further along without saying that wasn't good enough. I, and, like, I like that, Nancy. I like. I, I, I just had this conversation with my students today about that it's okay to <laughs> fail and, and that they can... I mean, we made this big event at the beginning of my semester that they jump on the chairs and scream, it's okay to fail. But I keep needing to reinforce it, and I think using the adaptive learning as opposed to the words failure is really important. We, we call it form of learning also, right? Formative learning. Yeah, exactly. And um, but if it's public on Twitter, it's a higher risk to them than if it's on a, a private Facebook group. Right. And 140 characters is hard for many of us. So to me, that's a very advanced level technique and a more advanced tool. But it also requires what's the community that will be reading those tweets that will be supportive and augment the learning of the classroom cohort themselves. So if I'm using a public-facing Twitter strategy, I also want to have people out there for the students to interact with. So I might do preparation with my network and saying, would you follow this hashtag for the next two weeks and give the students feedback? Because the yeah. value of the public face mm -hmm. space, public yeah. facing space blah, 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 is the utilization of the network for the learning, not just because it's an interesting tool. Right. right. Yeah. Very much. And, and we found that with some of you that are using Twitter with hashtags, um, sometimes it's like there's this private conversation going on in public, and we're seeing it go by, but we just don't get what's going on. And they're, and they're asking, Ken, am I, am I getting the translation right? And I'm like, I guess so. I, I, I just, they're, they're speaking a different domain-specific language that I'm not getting, and that's, that's probably okay. But maybe that brings them around to think about, you need to think about giving context when you're sending a message out in public as well if you if you want to draw people in and what Nancy said about bringing in say experts or the famous people um, I see Alan jump in on conversations we're making or, or Nancy or someone else outside this group and my students just get amazed that someone's listening to us and excited That's right. Moises looks like he's got a mic I'm trying to help Moises get in. Adelante. Okay. Resulta que en cada grupo hago que cada alumno abra un correo especial en Gmail para el grupo nada más y ya con ese correo abre un Face también nada más para el grupo y hay un Face del grupo o sea que yo soy de la gente que piensa que tratándose de estudiantes donde me la pinten brinco si quieren Face por Face si quieren correo por correo si quieren este Twitter por Twitter, o sea, estar en contacto siempre con ellos, que sientan que hay alguien que se preocupa por ellos y que está al pendiente de todo lo que se les ocurre, hasta recetas de cocina. Digo, porque hay unos que estudian turismo. Entonces, ya con eso me he dado cuenta que la mayoría este, leen lo que uno les manda. Les he mandado yo obras, sobre todo cómicas, de teatro griego, de Aristófanes, y si las leen, cosa que si las mando a la biblioteca, jamás las van a leer, aunque a lo mejor creo que ya ni esos libros ni siquiera están en la biblioteca. Entonces, esa es mi experiencia que quería compartir con ustedes. O sea, tratar la forma de estar en contacto con la luz, de hacerle llegar este... Digo, buscar y encontrar lo que necesita para su educación. Excellent. Excellent. I don't know if it cut off there. I was trying to, to translate quickly in text here. But it, it's a lot about. Moises was feeling that his students knew they had someone listening to them with, 
talking uh, via, ahora, via mail or Facebook. Se está cortando mucho. Entonces, pero para la próxima espero ya tener mi computadora grande ya conectado <laughs> directamente en internet. Es, uh, so, I actually, we got some of the content there, Moises, so that was good, but definitely being on a better connection is good, and I, I actually talked with Rocio in behind the scenes trying to make sure we have a, a test uh, hangout before the real hangout would be good. Um, Nancy, did you get something out of that, or Terry, that you wanted to add or comment on? Well, I think Ken, Ken made a, a face there a moment, so I, I, I wanted to pass it to, I mean, Kike, it's a K, sorry, it's <laughs> Kike, at one moment your face just said something. Did you have something there? Adelante, Kike. Estás en eh, mute. No, lo, lo, lo estaba escuchando y la verdad es que me gustó mucho este asunto de los estudiantes leen lo que les estoy enviando. Entonces, quiere, eh, eh, yo creo que una clave para que, para que los otros encuentren valor en eso que estamos compartiendo es que nosotros nos impliquemos en, en, en generar contenido y poner eh, nuestro tiempo, nuestra dedicación en que ese contenido sea de calidad y en la medida que nosotros, eh, en este caso el maestro compartió eh, obras griegas, una, una cuestión de lectura griega, entonces se, se, él se dedicó, puso su empeño en, en elegir eso que iba a compartir uh -huh. y eso se ve reflejado en que lo encontraron relevante, lo leyeron, ¿no? Entonces siempre, siempre hay que esforzarnos por tratar de que aquello que compartimos tenga un, implique, nos implique el esfuerzo de ponerle calidad para uh -huh. que entonces los estudiantes lo lean y, y, y verdaderamente se, se dé este, este vínculo, ¿no? Y yo creo que conectarlo personalmente y mucha gente me pide que debo grabar mis propios videos sobre contenido, mejor usar un video de un experto de la tema que grabar un video yo y mi sugerencia es no solamente pasas el video o el texto, pero debes hacer una conexión como Grabar si algo o escribir algo de tu opinión sobre el video o la lectura que están haciendo. Yo creo que eso es lo que pasó con Moisés. Los alumnos sentieron que eso viene de mi maestro. No viene como desde un libro de texto frío o de un biblioteca. Viene de mi maestro. Tengo conexión con mi maestro y por eso quiero meter más esfuerzo en mi trabajo. So, again, to make that digital identity connection <laughs> is that connection. <laughs> Um, when we have access to people who care about what we're saying or sharing right. or learning, it increases our sense of self-worth as a learner and it deepens the learning. So when we started, we talked about the different layers of digital identity and the most profound is our identity of ourselves and our identity as learners and connecting to people who can help us see, to be a mirror, to see and see ourselves as successful learners unlocks more successful learning. So whether they get it in the classroom or online. Excellent point. Excellent point. Someone else? Do we have more to, to share from Cusea, from Sierra Malinda? Cusea. Adelante. Sí, Melchor Orozco. Excelente. Bueno, caso, agradecerles también pues, todo este desarrollo de este diplomado que nos ha servido eh, como una nueva experiencia para incursionar en lo que es la enseñanza móvil a través de las tecnologías y creo que los muchachos lo han aceptado porque ellos lo manejan pues, de, de uso común. En mi caso, la materia que estoy este, impartiendo para este móvil es la de patrimonio natural. En, en, les he dejado varias actividades con respecto, la primera fue que crearan un meme con respecto a qué piensan de la investigación, porque vamos a desarrollar un, estamos desarrollando un proyecto de la visita a un campamento tortuguero para vincularlo con algunas actividades turísticas recreativas en el mismo campamento y como tal efecto, bueno, los memes ya, ya empezaron a llegar con respecto a su sorpresa de, de cómo desarrollar la investigación a través de las tecnologías. Eh, también les he aplicado algunas entrevistas eh, que están enviando vía correo electrónico, para ello, bueno, que tuvieron que implementar y abrir algunos, algunos de ellos correos de Gmail, porque también les agregué documentos en Drive, de tal manera que todos los documentos que están agregados ahí son relacionados con lo que es 
eh, el patrimonio natural de nuestro país, así como lo que es la investigación dentro del desarrollo comunitario y actividades eh, turísticas dentro de esos entornos. Entonces les dejo las lecturas y efectivamente como mencionaba nuestro compañero que, que habló anteriormente, pues sí leen las lecturas, hacen los comentarios a través de correo electrónico y envían mensajes a través de WhatsApp, tenemos un control por WhatsApp para estar dando seguimiento sobre las diversas actividades que dejo, que les dejo a cada uno de ellos y las diversas actividades que ellos también realizan para que todo el grupo esté enterado de, de cómo vamos de, desarrollando. ¿no? Entonces, eh, en forma general, eh, se quiere construir un, a través de dos equipos del grupo eh, un protocolo de investigación vinculado a estas actividades del desarrollo comunitario, eh, campamento tortuguero y actividades turísticas recreativas para concluir al final del semestre con un, una exposición a través de PowerPoint y a través de generación de fotografías eh, un seguimiento de fotografías de todas las actividades realizadas en la investigación de campo que se van a llevar a cabo en, en este mes de no, en el próximo mes de noviembre eh, para tomar videos y fotografías y que puedan desarrollar ellos este reto de la investigación y poder concluir con un producto final entonces a ellos les ha parecido eh, la, la investigación en ese sentido pues interesante a algunos para otros se les ha hecho excesivo la carga de trabajo que se les deja Dice que son demasiadas actividades, a, a diferencia de las actividades en grupo presenciales. También han manifestado eh, cómo subir ellos la información a través de lo que es eh, subir fotografías en Face y que sean de la comunidad. Para ello hemos creado un grupo cerrado, de tal suerte que toda la información que se suba en Face quede dentro de ese grupo cerrado y no sea público, al resto de las amistades de los que estamos integrados en Face, porque somos miles y miles de participantes en, en, los, en el Face. Cada quien pues tiene arriba de 500 miembros y eso diseminaría la información pues de forma exponencial. Entonces, por eso se creó el grupo cerrado en Face para trabajar eh, conjuntamente y participar integralmente en este desarrollo. Bueno, esa ha sido mi experiencia y me ha gustado muchísimo. Les agradecemos de nuestra parte también esa participación tan interactiva que hemos tenido a través de estas semanas que hemos desarrollado la investigación. That's, that's an awesome and, and trust me, every Friday when I finish this session, I go to lunch just in an awesome mood after this, these sessions with you people. It's, it's just amazing. Um, Nan, uh, let's see, Kike was grinning like a Cheshire cat right there. I'm thinking he had something to add. Kike? No, pues nada, igualmente, pues, pues felicitar que, que, que encuentren valor en incorporar estas tecnologías para, para su práctica docente y el que nos reporten que sus estudiantes se encuentran mejor enganchados, pues yo creo que es una ganancia que, que, que al final de cuentas es el motivo de que nosotros incursionemos en estas tecnologías, ¿no? I know Nancy was thinking something about group work she was mentioning here in chat. Well, it, it was, one is I didn't quite fully understand, of course, um, the, your comparison between the online and offline results. And so um, I'd love to have some insight on that. But the question that I wondered about was, when we use digital heriamentos with our estudiantes for group work, does it make the group work more successful and more engaging? You know, not just because of the novelty, of the tools, but because of how the tools can help us coordinate our work, make our work visible. But I also strongly echo your comment that digital tools allow me to have a line of sight to watch my students' group work and provide what feedback I need, or to be assured that they need no feedback from me, which is even better. Uh, and I, with a current group of students I'm working with, I feel I'm a better coach to their group work because of the digital tools and that visibility piece. Does that make sense? I, I see it in your voice that you're, you seem to be involved more with your students' day-to-day -day work and not just the final delivery. And, and that's what gets you excited as teachers with using these tools. 
Do we, we have four minutes, so we have time for a fast one. Sí, eh, buenas tardes, eh, muchas gracias. Bueno, hemos estado participando aquí en el centro, eh, retroalimentándonos con eh, la forma de cómo trabajaríamos o estamos trabajando con nuestros grupos. En lo personal, eh, yo sí me he encontrado con mucho interés por parte de los estudiantes, porque es una nueva forma de presentar sus trabajos, que normalmente ellos habían estado presentando sus clases, sus reportes, sus tareas, en un esquema tradicional. Esto yo lo he percibido con ellos a través de dos, tres retos que ya han estado presentando, que para ellos sí se les hace que se ha cambiado dentro de lo que cabe un poco la forma de cómo ellos pueden recibir la información que como, nosotros, que como maestros, nosotros estamos dándoles para que ellos aprendan eh, un material que muchas veces a ellos ya lo veían como algo tradicional y aburrido. Las herramientas tecnológicas les ha ayudado mucho a entender eh, mejor los temas, se les ha hecho más interesante la forma de presentar sus trabajos y retroalimentarnos todos, porque como comentamos, todos muchas veces venimos también a aprender de ellos, y más en este caso de las herramientas tecnológicas. Yo les agradezco mucho su tiempo, muchas gracias, y es lo único que pudiera compartirles el día de hoy. Gracias. Excellent. I think Nancy kind of wrapped it up with a, with a message in the chat here, the importance of tools and presenting group work is, it's just great that, that the students are taking advantage of this. I wanted to pass over to Ermelinda, I wanted to share something as well before we run right out of time here. Ermalinda, your microphone is muted. Gracias, buenas tardes. Eh, yo quiero compartir, primero darle las gracias por esta experiencia. Somos tres profesoras de distintos centros universitarios de ciencias de la salud, de ciencias sociales y su servidora en Matitlán. Eh, las tres no somos ya unas jovencitas, tenemos más de 20, 25 años dando clases. Y ha sido todo un reto para nosotros porque lo primero que hicimos fue romper estructuras personales. Después, en el caso de su servidora, después de 34 años de dar la clase de una forma tradicional, he roto el esquema. Mis alumnos están encantados, leen mucho sobre los temas. En lugar de hacer un examen tradicional, vamos a hacer carteles y trípticos sobre los distintos temas que han sido adquiridos. Y en la esplanada del centro universitario, los vamos a dar a conocer a la gente que pas, pasa o, o camina por ahí. Y eh, también estamos utilizando muchas de las aplicaciones que nos dieron. Si a mí me preguntan, no tengo nada de tecnología, ni sé manejar mucho tecnologías, pues, haciendo un gran esfuerzo, me está yendo muy bien y de con Quique puedo decir que estamos utilizando las evaluaciones. Mi clase es evaluada cada, al término de cada clase, de tal manera que puedo cambiar, modificar, corregir todo lo que se hubiera, eh, lo que se tuviera que hacer y estamos usando lo más que se puede las aplicaciones. Muchas gracias por su tiempo y por todo lo que nos han apoyado. Eso sería lo que puedo compartir. Awesome. I'm typing here trying to take notes. I, 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 it sounds like that last part. part. I really, really love that you're doing what I would call exit surveys or exit questions at the end of each class to make sure that you can improve each session that comes up. I, I bet Kike has something to say about those uh, non-traditional evaluations. Yes. Pues definitivamente es una forma muy fácil de, de alguna manera hacer medir el pulso de tu clase, ¿no? El, el, el sentir de los estudiantes. ¿Se lograron los objetivos? ¿No se lograron? Entonces me parece muy valioso y muchas gracias, Hermelinda, por compartir todo lo que estás eh, utilizando y me, me gusta ver mucho su, for, su furor por la innovación y su entusiasmo. Eh. Well, we're right up at the clock. My clock on the wall, but I don't have one, is telling me it's 1 p.m. So I'm going to wrap up week 7. I'm, I'm just super happy that we all got together and, and, and shared our projects, especially thank you to Josea for all getting together and, and sharing as well as Ermelinda, Moises, and Rocio was trying to get in. We'll get her in another time. 
And uh, thank you for all your work this week. Stay in touch online. Uh, if you want to participate la next week, which is going to be our last week of these online sessions, get a hold of me. And if you really want to, let's do a practice um, Google Hangout because there's little details of getting connected, as we could see. Um, thank you very much to everyone. Keep working, and we'll see you next Friday. Hasta la vista. Muchísimas gracias. Me encanto estas historias de suceso y aprendizaje. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 And I'll hit the stop broadcast button now.